It was a few years ago that I remember sitting with my journal and writing down a list of who I thought I was going to be and really looking at that list and examining, is this who I still want to be? And and not just that, but is this who I am? And where do I need to be willing to let go of ideas or dreams or expectations or hopes of who I thought that I should be or who I thought I was going to be and instead start embracing and accepting and running with who I actually am as a person. Welcome to Change in Us, the place of new beginnings. My name is Katherine Hubert, and I founded and own a French-inspired cafe where, as a team, we are on a mission to change the way that our world understands neurodiversity and employs humans with disabilities. Our restaurant was born and is based in Greensboro, North Carolina, and that's where we practice and teach our mission and model. This is our channel where we dive in deep to who we are, what we do, and why we do it. Our hope is that this content is empowering to disabled and non-disabled humans alike, and that no matter no matter what perspective you are coming from, employer, employee, parent, friend, or Shazeness fan, you feel welcomed, you learn something new, and you walk away with a deeper appreciation and understanding of humanity. Hey everybody! I am glad that you're here with me today. I am back in the restaurant space back to hopefully more of a normal rhythm and routine this week, which has me feeling energized. So hopefully you can feel that or sense that through <laughs> through the camera here today. We're coming back to a reoccurring series. This is gonna be part two. If you missed part one, favorite thought leaders, my first feature was Trevor Noah, because we know that he is my all time favorite. But today I'm excited not to diminish the light of Glennon Doyle, which is who I'm going to talk about today because she also shines brightly. But part two of my favorite thought leaders, I'm gonna be talking today about Glennon Doyle, who she is. We're gonna break down the last video. I gave five points for what makes someone a thought leader in my mind or a thought leader that I like to follow. So instead of just going through that list, I'm gonna go through each point as it pertains to Glennon Doyle and share some of the ways that she has personally impacted me. So. That's what we're doing. That's why we're here. Thanks for being here. Let's dive in. All right, so most likely, if you are clicking on this video, you probably already know who Glennon Doyle is. But just in case you do not, or so that we're all on the same page, brief recap as to who she is. She's a 48-year-old woman. She's an author. She's a keynote speaker. She has a podcast called We Can Do Hard Things, which she hosts with her wife, Abby Wambach, and her sister, Amanda. Amanda, but I don't remember Amanda's last name. They host it together. She has written several books. Untamed, Love Warrior are two of the books that she is most well known for. She's an LGBTQIA activist, queer rights activist, and she's a wife and a mom. Why is she my thought leader of choice today? Well, to point back to the five things that make someone a thought leader that I want to follow. Number one is that I look for the thought leader to be an expert in their area and for that expertise to be backed up by lived experience. It's one thing to have the head knowledge and another to have the physical and emotional. For Glennon Doyle, something that I greatly respect and appreciate about her is that she's living out and in a public way, but also you can tell it's very private and personal, the things that she speaks on and the things that she speaks to. I really admire the way that she is willing to wrestle with messy and complicated topics, both within her own, it seems like friend and family sphere and personally and internally, and then to actually bring those out into the world, into a space where other people are able to engage and connect and participate. What she has to write about, what she has to speak about, feel very congruent to me with how she lives. And that's something that I look for and that I respect. She speaks a good deal about spirituality, what that process of spiritual discovery and understanding and transformation has been like in her life. She speaks quite a bit about recovery and what recovery has looked like in her life 
particularly in regards to addiction and eating disorders. And then in terms of LGBTQ rights and advocacy from her own experience. And again, I think that's something that I value is that she's speaking on things that tie back to her own personal experience. And so whether or not I am, I'm not in the same place as she is in life. (laughs) I'm not a 48 year old wife and mother who's a keynote well I am a keynote speaker not to the level that Glennon Doyle is like our lives look different but I can learn and glean a lot from her because she's speaking so much from her own personal experience and relating that back to the world so that's number one Number two, I look for leaders who are teachable and willing to actively seek out new opportunities or ways to keep learning. Leaders who listen to others are so attractive. I see this demonstrated most clearly with her through her podcast, the We Can Do Hard Things podcast. Every once in a while, it's a podcast that is truly centered around Glennon, Abby, and Amanda. But most often, they have guests and experts who are on the podcast speaking on a variety of different topics. I appreciate the scale and the scope of the content that they talk about on their podcast. It's also very deep. There are definitely seasons of life where I do not listen to this podcast and I listen to fluffy TV and entertainment podcasts because that's what my brain needs when I'm like trying to decompress and, and, you know, take a walk around my neighborhood with my dog at the end of the day. But I love the opportunity and the ability to dive into her podcast and to learn through that platform about other people, about other industries, a lot about psychology and how our brains work and how our emotions work. The level of depth and value that is offered is so high. And it's one of the amazing things about the internet Not all things are, but one of the amazing things about the internet and the podcasting world is just having access to educational and informational content that we haven't had access to earlier. And some of it, I'm like, it's amazing that we get to have that for free. I feel like there's so much value there. And I appreciate greatly the curiosity in which she approaches those hard things, the compassion in which she approaches it, and also the amount of research and contemplation you can tell has taken place before the podcast has ever aired in order for those conversations to really be productive and fruitful. Number three, is the thought leader relatable? Meaning that they are grounded, not too full of themselves, and also have a shared value system, even if that manifests into different ideas, perspectives, experiences, etc. In fact, the difference in ideas, perspectives, and experiences is preferred. One of the things that I really like about following Glennon Doyle on Instagram is how relatable she is in her like off the clock moments, as in this moment here. Hey baby, what was it like watching the women's basketball game? I'm never, I don't know if I'm gonna watch it relentlessly or never watch it again. I've never experienced anything like it. I am drenched with sweat. There is no time to feel any feelings, no time to process anything. Yay, shit, yay, shit. I'm, I understand why they don't wear sleeves. I'm freaking drenched. That's why these costumes are sleeveless. Yo, yo, we won gold. Oh my God. Good job, ladies. Brance is good too. I mean, it came. And how do they stay so calm and concentrated under this sort of pressure? <laughs> I can't believe we made it through this together. <laughs> now we got the closing ceremonies. Oh, I don't want it to be over, but the Paralympic starts, which is. <sighs> Jesus. I feel like who she is as a human just shines through in so many beautiful and relatable ways. And I appreciate the access. She doesn't have to do that. You can be a public figure and not let people have access to your personal or your home life. But the fact that she does, and it makes her so approachable and that feeling of like, that's me too. Like I understand that too. And it creates, I think for me at least, there's this this bond or of feeling like, This can be someone that I look up to and could aspire to be like, and also am already like in many ways. And that I think can be really encouraging. She also, like that's maybe on more of just like a human level, right? Kind of quirky things that you do or don't do throughout the day. But on a deeper level, and I'm gonna read an excerpt from her website, 
her description of who she is. And that's something that also like stirs up a lot of resonant feelings in me. There's a voice of longing inside every woman. We strive so mightily to be good, good mothers, daughters, partners, employees, citizens, and friends. We believe all this striving will make us feel alive. Instead, it leaves us feeling weary, stuck, overwhelmed, and underwhelmed. We look at our lives, relationships, and world and wonder, wasn't it all supposed to be more beautiful than this? We quickly silence that question, telling ourselves to be grateful. We hide our simmering discontent, even from ourselves, until we reach our boiling point. Seven years ago, I reached my boiling point. I was speaking at a conference when a woman entered the room. I looked at her and fell instantly in love. Three words flooded my mind. There she is. At first, I assumed these words came to me from on high. Soon, I realized that they came to me from within. I was finally hearing my own voice, the voice that had been silenced by decades of cultural conditioning, numbing addictions, and institutional allegiances. This was the voice of the girl I had been before the world told me who to be. I vowed to never again abandon myself. I decided to build a life of my own, one based on my individual desire, intuition, and imagination. I would reclaim my true, untamed self. When we quit abandoning ourselves and instead abandon the world's expectations of us, we become women who can finally look at our lives and recognize there she is. My book, Untamed, is about how to be brave. Here is what I've learned. The braver we are, the luckier we get. In that, I honestly got emotional reading it, and I wish that you could have, I could have captured that. I thought I was recording as I was reading it the first time, and I was not. (laughs) So I was a little less emotional reading it the second time (laughs) because I'd already just read it once. But that hits this really deep place in me. A lot of the work that I have been personally doing over the past several years has been to realign with my core self to tap back into little Catherine. (laughs) I went to by Katie when I was a kid, so little Katie, to tap back into the little girl that I was and the things that I remember about myself before I started internalizing a lot of the opinions or perspectives of people around me. And that's really hard work. It's hard to shed layers of shame. It's hard to detach from the ideas or expectations that I have felt from people in my life. And it's hard to detach from the ideas or expectations that I have then put upon myself. It was a few years ago that I remember sitting with my journal and writing down a list of who I thought I was going to be and really looking at that list and examining, is this who I still want to be? And and not just that, but is this who I am? And where do I need to be willing to let go of ideas or dreams or expectations or hopes of who I thought that I should be or who I thought I was going to be and instead start embracing and accepting and running with who I actually am as a person. That journey for me got started before I got connected (laughs) with Glennon Doyle, before I got connected, we're we're such good friends now. Before I read her book, Untamed, before I started listening to her podcast, I, I was late to the bandwagon and I was late because I am a little bit of a rebel and when there's a lot of buzz culturally around something, I tend to be the person who's like, no thanks. I, you know, I'm not into that, even if it's like, but maybe I kind of am. And that was the case with her book, Untamed, where I was like, wow, everybody's reading it. All these women are reading it. Now I'm like, all these women should be reading it. Like I fully support and love the book, but it took me a little while to get to it. So I'd already started that inner work myself. And then I got connected and I read her book and I just felt like every chapter I was just, it was just hitting, hitting such a strong with me. Which brings me to point number four. I want someone who can expand my own way of thinking around a topic or who can push me to have a breakthrough in my own thought process. Her work individually, Glennon Doyle's work individually, has pushed me to deeper levels of thinking and has encouraged me to actually like have some of those like breakthrough or like kind of full circle moments. I also appreciate the liaison that she has been for me with other thought leaders and other industry professionals who've also stretched and expanded the way that I think and feel about things. And I also just really admire her bravery and her no bullshit attitude. Like she's very quick to advocate, very quick to stand up for the things that she values and that she believes in. And 
I want to be that person more and more and it inspires me to see someone who does that publicly and who also receives pushback from that which is the reality and some of you may be watching this and you may not be a fan of hers or you may have not previously been a fan I know within a lot of Christian and church cultures there's pushback for her at least I remember hearing a lot about that at the time it was kind of like oh she you know she left her husband and she married a woman and so there's kind of this discrediting of who she was because of that and instead of validating her own experience and seeing the bravery in the decisions that she made for her and her family um, and being willing to hear that through her voice and her lens instead of just placing projections on her. I know that she's received backlash or criticism for other elements of topics that she's covered, things that she's spoken on, the way that she's spoken on things. And I think inside of that, what I respect is that she still stands up for and fights for the things that she believes in and that there's a commitment to herself and a commitment to her work above the pushback that she may receive. And that also resonates with me in the work that I'm doing in disability advocacy and employment, recognizing that there's pushback and criticism that I've gotten in different ways because of the work that I'm doing. And the more public I become with that, the more that that will increase. And so it's encouraging for me to see other people who haven't let that stop them. And that kind of strengthens my own feet and grounding and ability to like see someone model that for me and feel a little bit more equipped or ready to do that myself. And lastly, we got like, I don't know which vibe this is. Am I in the 90s, the 80s? The mock turtleneck and the side pony and the, I got my, <laughs> I'm gonna fall over. I got my fun Vans sneakers on here today. I really hurt, I really hurt my quad. Anyways, number five. Lastly, I look for someone who can keep me company and who helps me feel less alone in my own work and process. This is one point at the end. I feel like I've already mentioned this point and incorporated it honestly into all of my other points, but there's, there's a story or kind of an analogy that she gives at the beginning of Untamed about a cheetah. And the gist of it is one, you should just read the book because it's going to be better than what I'm about to tell <laughs> tell you, but I'm gonna give it my best shot anyways. Being at a zoo and seeing a cheetah performing tricks for the crowd, you know, it's been trained to do that, it's been tamed to do that. And then seeing that cheetah walk to the edge and just kind of like scan over the landscape. And her daughter at the time who was with her asked a question about it. This is where the details are gonna get fuzzy for me. But the idea of, of her looking for, that cheetah looking for what she knows she's missing. I'm saying this cheetah's a woman because I'm tying it back to myself, but looking for the wild, recognizing am I not made for more than this? And that feeling as people and women in particular who oftentimes go through life being tamed, being trained to do certain things, to say certain things, to not do certain things, to not say certain things. And this feeling inside of am I not made for more? And the chapter ends with Glennon saying, like, yes, you're a goddamn cheetah. And I remember reading the book and feeling the emotional impact. And I remember calling my sister and reading that to her and then just crying through it. And we're both determined to get cheetah tattoos now. <laughs> it's going to be it's going to be an addition to my arms at some point. But that level of feeling like I'm not alone in this. I'm not the only one who feels like, was I not made for more? I feel like the artist in me, the woman in me is constantly scanning the horizon thinking, is this all there is? Like, is this what the rest of my life is going to be? And there's room there to grow in my ability to stay present and to actually embrace what I'm given in the moment while also recognizing that a big part of who I am is pursuing hopes, dreams, imagination, what could be, the beauty of what could be, and that there are a lot of things that actually are in my life now and that are part of my present day because I had the bravery and the gumption to take something that I wanted to see and made it happen. And so wanting to break molds, wanting not to be contained or to be afraid about being uncomfortable or afraid of making someone else uncomfortable and to lead with grace, to lead with strength, to be empowered, to empower others, and to ultimately be a strong, silly, smart, tender, observant, <laughs> little 
fool of a girl who just wants to see big and glorious things happen in the world and who wants to be the person who's part of them. So this is a cheers, cheers to Glennon Doyle and for the ways that she's impacted my life and also cheers to myself <laughs> for being willing to step into a life that may feel sometimes like a lot, but that is, that is challenging me to be online and to step into the world and the life that I want to have. And cheers to you for being here, for taking the time and for being a person. You wouldn't be here if you weren't this kind of person who is willing to do the introspection and the internal work to grow and to become free to be ourselves. Thanks for being here. Shazeness, teammates and fans, your keyword for this week is cheetah. Shazeness, teammates, you know what to do. If you're a fan and you live in Greensboro, come in and tell us the keyword and you will get a dessert on the house this week. <laughs> <laughs>